Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now, the button below. To sort of give us a little bit of a break and then we'll go to the, the Khatma Khawjigan inshaAllah. Again, in times we were talking earlier with the, some people that Auzu billahi minash shaitan rajeem, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Atiyallah tiya Rasulu ulil amri minkum wa ana abdakul ajeezu, da'eefu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahal and that to take a way in which to efface ourself to be nothing. It's important to tell people that you're nothing and if they still stay then that's up to them. That's their reliance on Allah and the attraction in their heart for Allah that not to attract people to yourself by certain characteristics and these are the dangers of the characters that now move upon the earth. So we took a path in which to be nothing. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us in this ocean of realities as we grow closer to the end. The sound and hamd and praise is every reality and if we take all of the usul and all our practices and reduce to the common denominator. We said it many times, a reminder always for myself is, we should be thinking in light and in energy. And this is the most scientific and perfected of belief that we are not a a zahiri and a people of form but we are from and hope to be from the people of Malakut, the world of light. The world of light comes to teach these people on earth to think from light and light by its nature of manifestation is energy. And everything that Allah prescribed for us through the holy prophets, holy books, the angels, everything was to perfect our energy. Very simple in a nutshell and then people think, oh what are you people talking about, you religious people? And they say, oh our scientists they know and we are people who follow science. They say, no you, when you minimalize something and you try to insult it as if nothing you've lost a great mercy from God. The Prophets were the most advanced of realities. Science is not but a drop in anything and understands nothing. The Prophets of Allah Sayyidina Muhammad came to bring the most advanced understandings from the heavens. And in these days of difficulty they are the most essential understandings. That when everything that coming to us is by a frequency and the level in which we emanate our frequency. If you are emanating at a hundred for example for us just to understand the analogy, your zikr, your practices, your salah, your zakah, all of these raise your frequency. If you are trying to be from Salihin. Imagine then that frequency is like a hundred, like a, a heavenly frequency. And then we'll understand why so many hadith said in the last days, none will be left upon the earth except the salihin righteous or extremely evil and wicked, Hezbu shaitan. There's no middle because either the frequency is super high and they survived or the frequency is super low and they're demonic. Everything in the middle will be crushed and put to dust. So it means that this frequency if you think by example you raised it, you cleaned it, you did your zikr, you gave your zakah, you did your practices, your being, your soul and the heat of your energy is emanating let's say at a hundred. Every type of difficulty comes to the insan to attack it. If it comes at a 30, if the energy of something bad comes to you at a 30, your hundred is stronger than the 30 and it hits it and brings it down. If it comes to you at a 50 
let's say a satanic attack and jinn attack or whatever people want to think of a negative energy, whatever their culture for understanding a negative energy, a disease, whatever it is. If it comes to you at a 50 or 60, you're emanating at a 100, it may cause you to become sickened but your energy hits it back down because your frequency is higher. And Allah tell them, O Janab al-Haqq, when the truth comes it and uh, it dis destroys the falsehood. And the truth and false they're not in the same vicinity. That was giving, well Allah was giving in Ayatul Kareem advanced realities of energy. Tell them, O Janab al-Haqq, that you are the highest of my frequencies. From your frequency everything created. If they love you, you will perfect their frequency. If they love you, your frequency will dress them, feekum. All these Qur'anic ayahs, why you don't think in English? Feekum, the Allah just guarantees if you love Prophet his frequency will come to you. If the prophetic frequency is emanating within insan qujjal haq wa zaha qalbah that your haqq will definitely hit every type of falsehood and every falsehood by its nature is trying to come towards you. And that is why low frequency and shaitan's goal is what? To bring your frequency down. So you don't have to talk in religious dogma that everybody want to argue about, no my, my aqidah is this, my, my kitab is this, my understanding is this. The equal denominator in school they taught us for math, find the equal denominator because the, the two sides of the, the formula have to be equal. You can't, you can't multiply them if it's not equal, so your equal denominator is energy. It equalizes all religions. If what you think you are doing is producing positive energy to counter yourself against every negative attack, more power to you. But if what you're doing is false. It produces no energy. So you busy yourself and Allah describes many ayat al kareem they busy themselves playing and they got nowhere. Their practices are not giving them energy. They, they think they're doing something, their energy not going above 20, 30. And uh, that's where every shaitan is coming to attack. So then shaitan's goal, bad energy's goal is what? Hit the person, bring their energy field down. So their sayyat, their sins, their bad actions bring their frequency down and it goes notch by notch. You're doing good, you're doing good, all of a sudden boom something comes, somebody comes, some sort of attack comes and you find your frequency going down 10, going down 10, going down and that's what shaitan wants is bring this person down so that we can attack them. So on earth now you have everybody who was doing nothing correctly. And they emanate at a 10 and 15, they say, but they're good, I'm a good person. It's not about being only you say you're a good person, but what are your practices that bring your energy up? Being good should be a result of actions. If you are good, did you have good actions? Did you take care of people? Did you give? Did you support? Were you someone of service? Did you live a life of chanting for the Divine, praising and thanking the Divine, helping the Divine's creation and creatures? Then you should have had a high energy. But just saying, I did good and I'm at a 20, every type of demonic force hits the person and knocks them to be dead and down. So then our life is about how to raise the frequency. So when someone asks, say, should I steep keep reciting this, should I eat like this, should I keep doing this, should I keep doing that? I say, you answer yourself. This is very common sense. If you're not understanding yet the concept of energy then you answer it yourself. Do you think your energy is so high that you don't have to recite anymore? Don't recite. You don't need to send an email for that. If your energy is not high and in the one whom their energy is high they never stop reciting. All day long they have wazifas and salawats and zikrs and istighfars, they live their life in circles of zikr, why? To get more energy. But then when they realize when they're doing their zikr, they're doing their practices, they're doing their salah. Now even the Wahhabis are reading about dajjal and they realize that dajjal will take away food from everyone except his people. 
And Prophet was asked, and what will be the people's food, the believer's food? And Prophet response, Zikrullah. Now they believe, oh oh, my God if Dajjal coming, our food is Zikrullah and we told everybody not to make Zikr, that it was a bidah. So they're going to be really hungry people. So it's even causing them to go back and read, read your knowledge and understand. Zikrullah tatmainu qulub that the zikr raises your frequency, gives you energy. Then the people of energy understood that their du'as, their practices, all their recitation never stop, never stops to say they can keep emanating at a frequency. Then they realized that also their frequency is never enough. So they multiplied. So in science you're multiplying factor or catalyst. When you need a reaction to take place in your exam room, you must introduce a catalyst that speeds up the process that is madad. Your energy, Ya Rabbi Ya Rabbi, my energy is not going to get anywhere. These shaitans are coming in at very high frequency trying to attack. Then Allah inspired long ago in our, in our system and in our way, make madad. My Salihin is in every salah you're making, As Salaamu Alaykum Ayyuha Nabi Wa Salaamu Alaykum Ibadullahi Salihin. Those who worried about shirk they don't understand the words they say when they're praying. Praying and, and is only for Allah. But Allah is asking you in your salah make salams, Ibadullahi Salihin, Itaqullah wa kunu ma sadiqeen. Allah continuously throughout Qur'an is, is giving us hints, keep their company. So as soon as they make madad, this is not worshipness, they're asking for them to be with them, be with me. Ya Rijalullah from Budal, Nujab, Nuqab, Awtad, Wal Akhyar, Jinn, Wal Malaika. That from your creation who are mu'min and believers, Ya Rabbi, surround me with their energy. They're not coming with chelo kebab for you and sumak. Although I'm hungry, so that sounds pretty good. <laughs> They're coming with energy. Can you imagine from Budala, which of the Budala servants when they come, what type of energy they come in the room with you? You don't have to see them because they're not interested in you trying to, you know, communicate with them. They're not here to compete, la shariq, they don't want to be seen, they don't want you to focus on them. They just wanted you to ask Allah, let me go. Let me go, let me go. As soon as you ask for madad, they'll ask Allah, give us permission to enter into their precincts, into their room. As soon as these, these holy souls from the jinn and from ins, the Buddhala, Nujaba, Nuqaba, Awtad, these categories of Rijalullah, not only human. So people say, oh, when you talk about jinn you, you spook me out. Uh, excuse me, all the categories of Rijalullah are fixed and mixed with ins and jinn. And you don't need to call upon a particular jinn and try to see him. All you're asking is from Allah's rijal and you've been given the names of the rijal. Ya Rabbi I'm calling upon them, asking them to be present with me and send their support. So imagine now 10,000 volts of energy enter into the room because you keep calling all the, the silsila of the tariqah. 10,000 volts in the room and as soon as you meditate they start to send to you to your capacity. But those 10,000 volts they scare away every type of satanic energy. Because those little 100 watts that are coming in, 20 watts coming in is like those commercials for raid, Because <laughs> they're coming and see what the heck is this? You know the voltage from heavens are coming into that room. They take away by Allah's might and majesty every type of difficulty, every type of sickness. If they feel that your request is sincere and you live the life of that understanding, you recite all the time, you make madad all the time, you try to improve yourself all the time, their energy is all around you. You eat right, you act right, you, you, you keep your care for your practices. That's why they said then don't be weird and insulting on the internet and social platforms. If, if the shaykhs are watching, imagine what they're seeing. 
All of that has to do with the ocean of sincerity when the servant keeps themselves in a sincere condition, every practice, every madad has a power. If they be dressed by a thousand volts and they don't lose but 10, 20 or 100 volts for the week, imagine then the next week how much energy they have. Because one of the problems with solar energy when they first made it is that the sun comes, makes the energy, they didn't know how to store it. Because they said, what are we going to do? If, if, if we send this energy into the home and they don't use it, it'll just be wasted. So the energy system was only as good as your collection ability. One thing to gather the energy but do you have the ability to collect the energy like a battery. If what you bring in goes out by the bad actions, then you're, you're having a very difficult life. So they told us, no, no, put all your insulation on. So the sunnah is an insulation, it keeps the barakah and the energy, washing wudu, everything that Sayyidina Muhammad brought was for the creation of your battery. That insulate yourself in the dress that Allah prefers. Cover yourself, for the men grow your beard. It's okay for some women too but mainly for the men because <laughs> people say, why you only talk about the men? I say, okay but if you want to have a beard you can have a beard, that's it. But men were also <laughs> responsible for covering their head, right? So you see all the men with no head cover and they let their beautiful hair out and make their women cover walk behind me. <laughs> That's not the way it goes. Keep your head covered, keep all your clothes in sunnah, keep your ring, it keeps nazar and it shows your allegiance to Sayyidina Muhammad Keep your way, keep your practices, everything that Prophet brought for us, make it a battery. So as soon as you do your practices you get a charge, you get another charge, you get another charge, you get another charge. And some of them are batteries that can power entire city entire continent, entire earth these awliyaullah because of the amount of power that generating through their heart of what they saved and what they're able to, to give out. Mawlana Shah Naqshaban Qatasallahu's power was so great he didn't want to use it on earth and they say he trained his eyes to move so that nobody could look into his eyes to pull his energy out. And that he's continuously was rotating his eyes to not use that energy on earth. And Ya Nurul Ya Rahman bahaqqa Mawlana Shah Naqshaban that from his right eye will feel four levels of paradise, he'll intercede for them. He'll take out from Jahannam and difficulties four levels that will feel four paradises. From where? From the energy that was deposited upon his soul of what he built and built and built. Means these are the powerhouses of reality that Allah gave, Izzatullah, Izzat al-Rasul wa Izzat al-Mu'mineen. So I mean this is all in Qur'an, this is all the understanding. Our life is about this understanding of energy. Now they found out that these viruses can be fought with energy, UBC lights, all of these understandings they can cast something at it which is a frequency that will shatter this disease, shatter many diseases. That's why the believer when he begins to pray he's raising his frequency or her frequency. That raising of the frequency is what shatters and pushes away sickness. That's why when they pray for you you're wondering, oh how did their prayer work? One by Izzatullah and permission of Allah and by Allah allowing, release your frequency. As soon as they begin to make that du'a, the frequency that come from them onto the person, it shatters everything that's incorrect and make everything to go back to its correct signal. If Allah permits, is that Allah, is that the Rasul, is that the Mu'mineen? Has to come by a permission, but how? It's by an energy. The person is deficient in their energy, something has attached itself to bring a deficiency on insan, their du'a is merely an energy. They begin to cast their energy onto the person and begin to shatter everything that's not correct. 
to bring it back to the way Allah wants it. And they can do that from a distance and they can do that in person, it's not uh, anything that's difficult. It requires Allah's permission. And if there's no permission, it's that Allah won't that insan build your own energy. Don't be relying upon always asking somebody else to take a problem away, correct yourself in every action that you do and every practice that you do. And don't look for a way to say, I, should I stop it now? No, you don't stop it until you enter into the grave. Keep increasing your practices, keep increasing your your understanding and your deen and your religion. This is not a time now that this is going to become lesson and go away. These are now going to be coming in waves. Those who survive the first wave, another wave is coming. And Allah testing, Ayyuhal ladina amanu, amanu. Oh you who believe, now let's go higher now, believe even stronger. So that their strength and their practices become stronger. Subhana rabbika rabbi izzatan ma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri surat al Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.